Welcome. My name is Megan with Enigma Yoga and today I am offering a flow that will focus on some balance poses. So I hope you are ready to play with balance and to look for a sense of peace and stability even when there are many different circumstances coming at you. We'll work with that today in this practice. It will be probably about a 45 to 50 minute practice. If you have blocks and a strap or in the absence of that, maybe some nice big books and a belt or a towel, you may wish to have those near for some of the poses we'll be doing. So let's start just in an easy seated pose this morning, placing the backs of the hands against the knees. Fingers just curl gently towards the palms of the hands. We start to focus in on the sensation of our breathing, drawing the air in through the nose, releasing the exhale out through the nose, settling in, coming to the practice and clearing away any distracted thoughts of whatever we've just been doing and whatever is later to come. Coming into the present moment, sitting easily, equally on our sits bones with our shoulders stacked directly above our hips, shoulders rolled back and down, chest proud, head lifted. Bringing the awareness into the feeling of the fresh air entering our body and the stale air exiting our body. So much going on in the world right now that makes us feel off balance. And so we use our practice as a way to cultivate stability, resilience, a sense of play, maybe a sense of getting back up and trying again if we stumble or fall. A couple more rounds of breathing here. Maybe your eyes are closed or with a soft gaze. Just bring that awareness further into the sensations in your body. One more inhale and an exhale. Let's blink the eyes open if they're closed. And let's just pull back really briefly into a child's pose. You can have your knees wide or together. Reaching the hips back towards the heels, stretching the hands forward, pressing into the mat, arms long, stretching out from the shoulders, maybe drop the forehead to the mat, maybe roll it side to side, get a little bit of pressure, sinus congestion, allergies, what have you. And then from here, let's press up in our first down dog of the practice. Pushing down through the fingers into the mat, extending the legs, maybe bending one knee and straightening the other, just working out some of the tightness from whatever you've been doing or maybe not doing. Maybe this is the early morning practice where you're just waking up. Maybe it's the end of the day and you've been sitting at a computer all day, but just taking a little bit of easy movement. And with a nice deep inhale, come back to stillness. Allow the shoulders, the waist to draw long and low across the back to create space around the neck. From here, we'll take some sun salutations. Start with Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, step the right foot forward to the front of the mat. Left foot meets halfway lift with a flat back. Exhale, fold all the way forward. Inhale, stand and rise all the way up, gathering hands overhead and then to heart center. On the inhale, reach up overhead and exhale, fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. 
exhale, fold, plant the palms, set the feet back, lower through Chaturanga. I should note, always feel free to take Chaturanga on your knees or just get the vinyasa as you like. And then meet back in downward facing dog. Got a couple more, Surya Namaskar A with a little bit of a surprise. We continue, right foot steps forward, left comes up to meet. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, stand tall, hands up to the sky. And from here, rather than heart center, we take eagle pose. Right arm wraps underneath, left elbow with the feet together, sit the hips nice and low, and lift that right leg up and cross over the left knee. Our first experiment with balance in this practice, early eagle. Distributing the weight across all four corners of that standing foot. Stacking the hips over heels, shoulders over hips and inhale, unwrap that side, arms up overhead, and we take left side eagle pose, left arm wrapping under right. If this is a little bit much on the shoulders, give yourself a hug instead. Sit the hips down, lift leg up to wrap over the right knee, and breathe, cultivating stillness in this twisty balance pose where there's a lot going on. Inhale, unwrap the eagle, arms up to the sky, fall forward to the ground, halfway lift, exhale, fold it down, and step the feet back, lowering down through Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra, and pull it back, to downward facing dog. From dog one more surya a right foot steps forward, left foot meets, inhale halfway lift, exhale fold forward, inhale stand firm in the feet to rise up and from here we take tree pose. Arms can come down into Tadasana, stand into the left foot and with the right foot Find a place somewhere along the inside of the left leg where you can press the sole of the foot into the leg without pressing into the knee. And here we stand firm in our tree pose, maybe feeling some wobbles creep in, any option with the arms that you like in tree pose opening maybe a little bit of the hip early in the practice. And we release the right foot down to the ground, lift the left foot to find a spot inside of the left leg. Maybe it's different from the other side. Just notice no judgment to ascribe to that. And we balance and we breathe like the tree outside, maybe finding that little bit of flexibility to bend instead of break. And we release left foot, breathing the arms back up overhead on an inhale and exhaling, swan diving down to the ground. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold it forward, plant the palms, step the feet, and we vinyasa, and clear that away. Meeting in downward dog, we'll move on to Surya Namaskar B to continue building some warmth in the body. On an inhale, pull the hips back, and on an exhale, step or float to the front of the mat, rise up into chair pose, feet together, knees together, dropping the hips low towards the ground, building heat in the legs and reaching up, maybe towards where the wall and the ceiling meet in your space. 
Inhale, stand tall, hands to heart center, and then reach those arms up overhead and fold all the way forward. Halfway lift, exhale, fold forward, plant the palms, set the feet, and away we go with the vinyasa. Inhale into the back bend. Exhale into down dog. From down dog, right foot steps forward. On inhale, up into warrior one, just for a beat. Exhale, arms down, hands frame right foot. Foot steps back into chaturanga and lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot steps this time. Inhaling up into warrior one left side and exhaling back down to the earth to continue in the flow. Lowering down. One breath per movement. Meeting in downward facing dog and as with Surya A, we continue two more Bs with a little bit of a surprise. Inhale, pull the hips back and float forward. Rise up into chair pose. In chair pose, lift the right foot just a few inches up off of the ground and balance on the left, feeling all of a sudden the entire body weight in the left foot. Set that down and this time lift the left foot, feeling the entire body weight in the right foot. Plant both feet firm, stand up tall, hands to heart center, inhale them back up overhead, and we dive down. And we continue, halfway lift, forward fold, stepping back into plank, lowering, inhaling, and exhaling into down dog. Good dog, right foot steps, rising into warrior one, and exhaling back down to the earth, taking, modifying or skipping a vinyasa, depending on what serves your practice today. And left foot steps, rising up again, victorious in the flow. Exhaling hands down, stepping back and lowering. Inhaling into your back bend. And we meet again in our old friend, downward facing dog. And one more, Surya B to complete our warm up this morning. Inhaling, pulling the hips back, exhale, step or float forward. Rise up into chair. And from here, we'll take another hip opener. Maybe stand all the way up, bring the right ankle up to cross over the left knee as if we were in figure four, lying on our backs reclined, but instead we are standing into that left leg, standing hip opener. And breathe for just a couple of breaths here. And stand up, release right leg, and lift the left leg, crossing the left ankle at the right knee, flexing into that left foot to protect the left knee, sinking the hips down, enjoying an early hip stretch. And releasing it. Inhaling arms up overhead, falling all the way forward to the ground, halfway lift, exhale, fold it forward, and plant the palms, and we vinyasa. Inhale up, dog or cobra. And exhale, down dog, stepping forward, right foot, inhaling up, warrior one, and exhaling back down into the vinyasa. Always breathing with the movement. And stepping from down dog with the left foot up into warrior one. Exhaling, releasing the pose, and another vinyasa. Exhaling back into down dog, 
a moment or two here to let that all settle. Maybe a nice deep in, inhale through the nose and then release it through the mouth, align with breath. And we'll continue with the flow. Right foot steps forward, we rise up into warrior one, finding a strong base with our right foot pointed to the front of the mat, left foot at about a 45 degree angle. I'm just aware of the placement of the knee as we hold this pose, not going too far forward, not going too far in towards the midline. We open out into warrior two. And from here, flip the right palm to face the ceiling and reverse the warrior as if you were painting a stripe across your ceiling, left arm hand reaches down the left calf. Inhale back up to center and continue forward into side angle. You may wish to use a block on the inside of the right foot to bring the floor closer to you. You might also want to bring the elbow to the knee. Reaching out maybe long overhead unbroken line of energy from the left foot all the way up through the fingertips of the left hand. Now maybe find one of those blocks or books, place it about 12 inches to the front of the right foot. And from here we will step up into half moon. Strong balancing pose on the right leg. The block here can be helpful to bring the floor closer to you. Standing with all four corners of the foot, weight equally distributed, contracting right quadricep for stability and balance in the standing leg and pressing firm through the heel. Lifting left hand up to the sky, chest open to the left side. And just maybe today you've had a sugar cane chapasana variation you'd like to spend a few moments in. If that's the case, you may take that here and return to half moon pose. One more inhale, challenging our balance here. And then as gracefully as we can muster, landing back in warrior two, straightening front leg, maybe shorten the step if you like, and reaching forward with that right hand into triangle pose. Again, always option to use the block with that hand that's on the floor. Stretching the left hand up towards the sky, stacking the shoulders in one line. Feeling as though you could draw your heels closer to each other on the mat. You won't actually move, but you may feel a different sensation in the backs of the legs, inner thighs. Inhale back up to standing, bend down into warrior two, flip the palm. Let's take one more revolved warrior, long stretch in the right side body. Inhale back up and cartwheel the arms down to the ground, stepping right foot back, lowering into our vinyasa. And we meet in down dog and we continue left side, left foot steps forward, rising up into warrior one, breathing into Whatever sensation is calling your attention at the moment, it may be left quadricep, it may be right hip, it may be some shoulder neck tightness from the bed or from whatever you've been doing. Just noticing it and breathing into it. And opening out into warrior two, finding the opening of the hips and torso to the right side. 
flipping left palm to face the ceiling and taking that revolved warrior stretch this time, stretching into left side body. Inhale back up to center, continue into side angle. Again, option to use the block. Reaching right arm out overhead, long and strong. And breathing as it starts to get maybe a little intense here as we hold. If you'd like to have that block prepared nearby for half moon, now would be a good time to do that. And let's load the weight into left leg and step up into our half moon. Maybe one side balancing is a little trickier than others. For me, my left side is always a little more challenging. So maybe pick one aspect of this pose to just focus on this practice and bring your awareness to that. It's a lot going on and it's nearly impossible to focus on everything at once. And if you fall out, just come back into the pose. You want to take that Chapasana variation. You may do that. I'm not going to instruct it, but if you have it in your practice, feel free. And if you're in a variation, release it. And hold for just another inhale and exhale cycle. And then as gracefully as you can muster, returning to warrior two and straightening front leg, maybe shorten the step if you like, and reach it out and down into triangle pose. Drawing navel towards the spine, chest is twisting open to the right side of this space, so maybe breathing into the backs of the lungs here. Bringing awareness back to the breath and noticing if it's grown a little shorter, maybe a little bit more uneven and recognizing that if that's the case the body may be signaling you the body is your own best teacher listen to what it is telling you and inhale pulling ourselves back up to warrior two flipping left palm taking one more luxurious side to stretch and revolved warrior and back up to center and continuing down to the floor, stepping left foot back and lowering down through our vinyasa. Meeting back in down dog. Couple of rounds of breath here. Before we continue, we'll have one more flow sequence before we change things up and come down to the ground. And as we're ready, right foot steps forward, up into crescent pose this time. Up on the toes of that back left foot. Squaring hips to the front of the mat, reaching the arms up. Take a crescent twist, open out to the right, or you can take the hands to heart center. Take the left elbow to the outside of the right knee. If you'd like to open the arms, if you'd like to bind, all options that are available to you in this twist, but always breathing, drawing the navel again to the spine and breathing into the backs of the lungs. And wherever you are, let's inhale back up to center. We're going to enter a series of balancing poses in flow. Just taking a deep breath, loading the weight into the right leg. We stand up here into our warrior three balance pose. Again, the blocks are always a great option. You can have them placed to either side of your foot. We're going to be standing into this right foot for a while. So maybe think about that. Any option with the arms here in warrior three that you like reaching out in front and the heart center, running back along the sides or tension on those blocks. Now from here, 
We're moving forward into a standing split. Another good time to have blocks to bring the floor closer to you as we lean down towards the ground. Find a hand placement to either side and a few inches up of that right foot. And the left leg reaching up towards the sky as we fold the torso over the right leg, forward folding, maybe grabbing the back of the ankle, maybe forehead towards the shin. Wherever we are, enjoying a deep hamstring stretch along the back of that right standing leg. And from here, we'll transition up to standing, maybe using those blocks along the way, coming all the way up, still standing into that right foot, gathering the left knee to the chest. And maybe this is a good place to hang out if you want to test the balance, maybe reaching down with the left peace fingers, right hand to right hip. If you've got good, stable standing here in the right leg, maybe extending the left leg forward, hands to feet pose. Challenging on the hamstring and the low back, so sucking in the abdominal muscles to support the low back. And then releasing that bind if you have it, coming back to the knee. One more standing balancing pose here. We're moving into bow pose dancer. So reaching back to clasp the left ankle with the left arm from the inside of that ankle, reaching the right arm up overhead. You can also use a strap to grab that foot if the shoulder is tight this morning. And from here, beginning to kick that left leg back up and towards the ceiling. Again, contracting the right quadricep for balance. And wherever you're playing with this pose and the balance this morning, and maybe you're wobbling all over your mat, that's fine. This is how we learn. If you fall out, get back in. We'll just take a few more seconds here. The right leg has now been doing lots of work, so fatigue playing into it. And inhale back up to center. Blessedly place that left foot down on the floor. And let's step with our legs nice and wide, toes pointed out in parallel, hands to hips. Fold all the way forward, cross the Rita. And you can ragdoll the arms, or you can just place the hands flat on the floor, or you've got the option to bind and give the shoulders a little stretch, but taking a few moments here, Nice wide-legged forward fold, just allowing all of that to settle. Rolling forward into the toes, deepen the sensation along the backs of the legs. And maybe just again coming back to the quality of your breathing. If the the inhales are no longer the same length as the exhales, maybe consciously trying to match those up. And whatever arm variation you've taken, let's now lift up with a flat back, turn towards the front of our space, bring the right foot back up to meet the left, and let's inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold forward, planting palms, step the feet back, and lower down through a vinyasa, or you may skip the vinyasa, pull straight back to downward dog. And now you know where we're going. We'll continue the left side, left foot steps forward, floating up into a crescent, and from crescent, choosing the variation of the twist that we would like to take, 
maybe right elbow to the outside of left knee. If you want to crack those arms open, if you want to bind. If you took one variation on the right side, maybe take the same on the left for a symmetrical experience. And then untwist, come back to center and we're preparing for our challenging balance flow, standing into the left leg and reaching forward and back into our warrior three. Keeping all four corners of the foot pressing down into the earth, contracting, standing knee without blocking it, micro bending to protect those ligaments, keeping the right hip pointed down and closed towards the ground rather than opening up. And breathing. And now reaching towards the earth, towards the block for our standing split left side. Encouraging the right foot up towards the ceiling. Hands to the blocks, to the earth for support in this challenging inverted balance pose. Maybe grabbing the back of the ankle to pull the forehead to the shin. And walking ourselves back forward. We're heading back up towards pulling that right knee into the chest. Taking a moment here to adjust and deciding if we want to place left hand to hip, grab the toes and extend that right leg out and forward in front. Here is also a good pose for the use of the strap. Breathing calmly wherever you are, balancing, not letting out all of this sensory input overwhelm you. And letting go the extension, we take right leg behind us, we grab inside of left ankle, right ankle with the right arm, Left arm up to the sky, and this is a good place to take a nice deep inhale. Feel the lung stretch up tall, and then begin to kick into the hand. Keeping again that hip close towards the ground, encouraging the back to begin to feel a bend before you begin to drop that chest down. Reaching left arm forward, maybe when you are balancing, finding a drishti or a nice steady still gazing point to which you can direct your energy and focus. A couple more breaths. If you've fallen out, just come on back in and play with it a little bit longer. And inhale back up to center. Set that right foot down. And let's step the feet wide, parallel again, hands to hips. Pull it forward with a nice flat back into Prasarita. And a few moments here to just let everything settle. If you bound the hands on the first side, I would suggest taking the bind again, but with the opposite hand thumb on top just to give yourself equal stretch in both sides of the shoulders. And allowing gravity to pull the weight of the head, the shoulders, the chest, everything down towards the earth. Allowing the spine to stretch out, decompress. Allowing the heartbeat and the breath to settle. And then releasing the arms and 
walking forward towards the front of the mat. Bringing the right foot forward to meet the left. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold it forward. Plant the palms, step the feet. It's our last vinyasa, so take that knowledge and do with it what you will. And we meet in downward facing dog. And let's walk the feet forward to meet the hands. From here, just have a ragdoll stretch for another moment or two, just letting that spine decompress, stretch out, and release the arms. Roll up slowly, one vertebrae at a time. Head, neck is the last to rise. Just take the arms up overhead, hands to heart center. Step the feet nice and wide. And we'll squat it all the way down, yogi squat, malasana. Maybe a block below your seat here. Encouraging the hips open, pressing the elbows against the knees gently. Maybe blinking the eyes towards closed or a soft gaze and giving yourself a few moments here, stretching the hips. Balance pose. Let's work a little bit on our Bakasana, our crow pose this morning. Just to play with it a little. Maybe you haven't really had the experience of playing with crow yet today. So planting the hands forward shoulders distance apart so they're just below the shoulder and from here bending the elbows and working towards bringing those knees high up on the triceps as high as you can maybe that's kind of something where you're just going to work on here for a little while but if you can get those knees nice and snuggled up on the triceps towards your armpits maybe play with leaning some weight a little bit forward into the hands just see what that feels like. And then maybe over time, lifting one toe up off of the mat. And then maybe over some more time, lifting the other toe up off of the mat. And finding balance in the hands, gazing on the mat, sucking the abdominals in, and letting it release. Come to our seat. We'll take a Navasana boat pose here, just to touch the core a little bit. So finding balance on the seat, on the tailbone, which can be an interesting experience. And holding Navasana here for a few rounds of breath. And let's lower into Ardha Navasana half boat. You can always bend the knees to modify this. I'll issue a challenge. You can join me or you can rest as you like. To join the challenge, let's inhale back up to full Navasana. Holding here for a few breaths. Navel to spine. Rolling the shoulders back, lifting the chest. Let's lower down into the Ardha Navasana. Always continuing to breathe and knowing your body enough to take a rest when you need to. Let's lift it on up again into Navasana one more time. Breathe here, finding a balance even as you wobble and tremble. Lower into Ardha Navasana, just for a few more breaths. And then release it all the way down to the ground. And a few rounds of inhale and exhale breath. Maybe find that strap you might have somewhere nearby. And we'll take a couple of hamstring stretches here on our back. So let's unroll the strap. Collect that right knee up to our chest and place the strap at the ball of the foot. 
So you send the leg up overhead and use that strap just to encourage a hamstring stretch. Keeping the leg straight through the knee and not using the strap as a weapon to force yourself into the stretch, but instead is just a, an encouragement. Maybe walking the hands up the strap to bring that hamstring a little deeper into the stretch and just breathing here, allowing the body to soften and allowing the tissues to open up. And then slowly, easily release that leg out of the stretch. Unhook the right foot. Let the right leg extend long in front of you. And draw the left knee to the chest. Finding the ball of the foot with the strap. And keeping that right leg long and straight out on the mat in front of us, using the strap to just encourage the left leg into our stretch on this side. Checking in again with the breathing, checking in with the sensations in the body. It may be that the hamstrings feel a little bit different than our very first down dog this morning now that we've taken lots of good movement maybe we can find a little bit more openness as we surrender into the stretch And slowly easing up, walking the hands back down the strap. Remove it from the ball of the foot. And extend the leg long and out in front. And from here, let's bring both knees up, moving towards a bridge pose. So you'll want the feet hips distance apart and the feet just as close to the seat so that if you reach down with your fingers, you could tickle the backs of your heels. And press the heels into the mat, lift the hips up off of the ground, press them up towards the ceiling. If you want to walk the shoulders underneath, clasp the hands that will allow you to reach up into a deeper stretch. We've not done a lot of work in back bending today, so maybe just be cognizant of that fact and not push yourself too hard here. Continuing to breathe, pressing the hips up towards the ceiling. And then removing the shoulders from underneath, lowering the hips down. Maybe just a quick windshield wiper of the knees from side to side. And I don't know about you, but once I'm down here on my back, I find it very difficult to get back up. So let's take our hip stretches or twists on the back. We'll take our reclined figure four, hearkening back to the standing figure four we took at the beginning of the practice, the right leg bends with the right ankle, place at the left knee, and reach through, grab the back of the left thigh or the front of the left shin, whatever you can reach, and pull the knee and the crossed knee towards your chest. Maintain that flex in the right foot to protect the right knee in this stretch and we'll breathe here into this hip opener for several rounds of breath. Maybe starting to feel a sensation of Savasana starting to creep up. Uh, 
possible that the hip feels a little bit different than we first encountered this stretch early on. Peeling away those layers, getting to something very deep within. And releasing left leg, uncrossing right, switching out the legs and pulling the right knee in towards the chest with that left ankle crossed at the right knee. Breathing this time into the left hip as it opens, deepens the stretch. the same shape as the one we did earlier. Just no work to hold yourself up. Instead, you can direct your focus elsewhere. And releasing that hip stretch. We'll finish up with our supine twist, inhaling the knees up to center. You can choose to eagle wrap if you like. If you do, I'd suggest right leg over the left first. Reaching the right arm out from the shoulder, gazing out over the right hand as we drop the legs over to the left. Enjoying a twist with the support of the earth holding us up. Maybe feeling that Savasana feeling creeping up a little higher on the body. Inhale the legs back up to center. And if you have an eagle wrap, just switch the leg out, left over right. Reach left arm out from shoulder, gazing out over right hand and dropping the knees over to the right side. One more rinse of the spine from top to bottom. And inhale those knees back up to center. Release the wrap if you have it. Maybe take the opportunity to give yourself a little hug while your knees are still close to your chest. And then lie back into Savasana, letting the legs reach out long and heavy in front of you. Letting the backs of the hands rest on the earth, palms facing the ceiling to receive all of the benefits of the practice. Eyes may be closed with a soft gaze. If you like to cover your eyes with a little towel or an eye pillow, feel free. Nothing left to do here, but breathe. Allow the energy to settle the mind like a still pond, like Something creeps in and causes a ripple on the surface of the pond. It comes back to stillness. And maybe scan through the body, noticing any areas where you still might be holding, contracting, gripping. And taking an inhale in the direction of that place, releasing on an exhale and letting it go. Good. 
you may wish to extend your savasana if you do i would invite you to pause the video at this time and stay here as long as you would like if you're ready to move on invite you to wriggle the fingers and the toes and bring the awareness back to the physical body with this gentle movement. Draw the knees up towards the chest and roll over onto one side to fetal position for just a moment or so. And press yourself back up to a nice easy seat. Maybe noticing if you feel a little bit more balanced, maybe a little bit more centered or grounded, maybe a little bit better able to withstand all of the inputs and overloads and different things that are happening around you. Just taking the opportunity to thank yourself for coming to the mat, to the practice, and doing something so good for body and mind. I thank you for being here with me to share this time today. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day ahead of you. Namaste.